So apparently the United States Air Force has flown a flight demonstrator of a sixth generation fighter. And the Army also shot down a cruise missile with a hypersonic projectile fired from a field artillery piece. Ah yes, and the F-16 now has a laser weapon pod that can zap enemy missiles and planes out of the sky. And there are all those hypersonic weapons being tested. And don't forget the artificial intelligence that defeated an expert F-16 pilot 5-0. And also, why not adding all the space initiatives currently ongoing to the stack? Well, all of this reminds me of something. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here are not easily found anywhere else. So we all heard a lot of sensational announcements in the last few months depicting an amazing high-tech future for the United States Air Force. It seems that suddenly all these kind of futuristic technologies are coming online. The United States Air Force is achieving such a superiority that no opponent will ever have a chance to win. Actually, win. I mean, every opponent will be completely destroyed in the first few hours. Well, actually in the first few minutes of a war by a hail of highly sophisticated weapons that will make any reaction useless. Okay, to those among you who have some grey hair, like I do, this may not not remind you of something. What? Just think of it. I give you a few seconds to think about it, let me know your ideas in the comments below. Okay, do you remember the Strategic Defense Initiative? On the 23rd of March 1983, the then President Ronald Reagan made his famous Star Wars speech. He announced the decision to develop the technology to intercept the nuclear ballistic missiles during their flight. In this way, a defensive shield had to be deployed above the United States to protect them from a nuclear strike. The hardware required to achieve this result did not exist, and a large-scale initiative to develop it was launched. Also during the 80s, news of incredible military developments appeared frequently and regularly on the press. The stealth plane above all, but also super silent submarines, new missiles, new tanks, airborne radars of an unprecedented range, electronic surveillance, and so on. Did it work? Well, in the case of the SDI, it was quickly realized that the operational deployment of these technologies was decades away. Even Sting wrote a song titled The Russians to say that he did not believe that the SDI could work. Some of the super weapons of the 80s eventually became staples of the United States Armed Forces and are still in service today. But many of them, particularly the space ones, were abandoned and today they are forgotten. However, the mere existence of such a program, the mere evidence of such a large effort being ongoing around all these science fiction weapons, put pressures on the Soviet Union and it contributed in no small measure to force the enactment of those politics that ultimately led to the fall of the Soviet Union. Now, I can't help thinking that what is going on today is just like the SDI. A lot of technologies are being thrown to the media to give the impression to the external observer that the United States is on the verge of a military technological revolution. I want to be clear, 
I don't think that the announcements are fake. I actually believe that they are quite representative of the current status of the programs. What I believe is that the way the information is presented is conducive to generating a sophisticated propaganda operation for the internal public and the foreign observers. I will go through a couple of these news to better explain what I mean with this. Let's unpack it. Let's start with the recent announcement of the first test flights of a sixth-generation fighter. First element to consider is that the plane has been explicitly defined a technology demonstrator and not a prototype. A technology demonstrator is a plane built in very small numbers to test in the real world some new technologies. It is not a prototype as some media outlets have erroneously supported. It is not the first iteration of a production plane. So, if it is a technology demonstrator, which kind of technologies was it built to demonstrate? Traditionally, a demonstrator covers make or break technologies like fly-by-wire, composites, inverse strip wings and so on. In the sixth generation, the only real new technology that has not been demonstrated yet is the integration with drones. But, to demonstrate this, probably a fleet of planes had to be built and we would probably have had some more news. What I think was demonstrated was the concept itself, the ability to go through the design cycle very, very quickly by the use of the holy trinity, as it has been defined, of new design techniques, digital engineering, agile software development and open architecture. None of these are new, they have been in use for decades. The novelty is the radicalization and the pervasiveness of their use as this was done recently on the new T7 trainer jet, the harbinger of this new approach. I have already covered the new Century Series approach championed by Will Roper in another video, so I won't go in details now. However, I will speculate that the manufacturer involved in the demonstrator could be Boeing, it was part of the T7 project with Saab, and Saab was one of the forerunners of adopting the digital engineering paradigm. For example, every Saab employee has a digital model of the grip and EF available to play around with. Uh, what if scenarios? This would also match with the news that the Tempest Consortium, formed by British Aerospace Saab and Leonardo, is adopting similar technologies to develop the Tempest 6th generation fighter. The second event I would like to cover is the announcement that an artificial intelligence algorithm has beaten an expert F-16 air combat instructor 5-0 in a recent competition. The echo of all the media outlets wisely pontificating about the end of the age of piloted fighters has just faded away. Where to start on this? First, I have to say, it did not happen. It did not. The software that has beaten the pilot was not an artificial intelligence software. It was a classical algorithm. This means that it is not modern at all. It could have been written 40 years ago, and it probably was in some corner of the American military industrial complex, and then it was forgotten. So, no, artificial intelligence is not better than humans on the basis of this test. Second, the environment was greatly simplified. It was supposed to be cannon only, but there was no simulation of the cannon ballistic. If one of the players entered a cone of one degree protruding from the nose of the enemy plane, it was considered to have been shot down. This is by no means the way the cannon is used in real combat. In real combat, each plane tries to reach a position behind the other because it is the only position where the cannon rounds have a high enough probability to reach the enemy plane. The simplified scenario resulted in the human being shot down most of the time by shots from the frontal arc, which would never be attempted in real combat. For those who say that artificial intelligence could also manage to take those kind of shots, 
I remind you that the French, while developing the Rafale, attempted just that. The cannon would have had an auto-firing mode just to automate frontal and high deflection shots, without relying on the pilot to judgment and reflexes. Well, they gave up. It turned out to be way too complex. Third, the algorithm had full situational awareness, so it knew exactly what the human was doing, something that even the most sophisticated sensors can provide to a computer trying to fly a plane. Actually, determining the opponent's speed and attitude in three dimensions for a total of six degrees of freedom is a big challenge for every type of sensor currently available. Not to speak of the need of doing so spherically around the plane and not just only in the frontal arc. In both of the cases discussed above, if we scratch the hype covering the actual, the actual news, we find some interesting research programs that are sold as a done deal. Don't get me wrong, the actual news are correct. Nobody has said that these technologies have already rendered obsolete the current assets. Nobody has said that these technologies are actually entering service. However, the way these news are overhyped in the media shows, in my opinion, that they are being used to put pressure onto the hostile stakeholders. The logic behind this is simple. If they believe that these technologies are behind the corner, then they will squander their resources trying to catch up and the United States will always be on top of the evolution. From a point of view, this may work, but it also entails huge risks. Do you remember what happened with the MiG-25? It was believed to be such a great plane that the United States sprinted to develop the F-15 in reply, which, for a while, outclassed all the other planes in the air-to-air -air combat arena for a couple of decades. And in the end, the MiG-25 did not turn out to be such a great plane. So there is the possibility that the opponent feels compelled to the point of developing something that actually outclasses the new technology that the US is developing. On the flip side, the other possibility is that the opponent deciding that it will never be able to catch up, thus developing asymmetric methodologies to counter the menace of the new technology, thus creating a threat where there was none before. For example, if there is no way to develop a comparable 6th generation fighter, an opponent could focus on developing bacteria, feeding on the radar absorbing materials delivered by dispersing aerosols and letting them be transported by the wind. So if you really think that we could develop bacteria feeding on uh, rather absorbing materials, I am sure you will find interesting the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please, as usual, like, dislike and subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. If you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar or Patreon, that would be amazing and you will have my gratitude forever. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very much for watching and see you in the next video.